we have been involved in is solidarity with brothers and sisters in Japan, not only people from Fukushima, but people all over Japan. And one of the things that the Japanese government did uh, in order to spread, the sh share the pain, if you want, is they were forcing all the prefectures or state governments of Japan to burn nuclear waste rubble. And they said, this is how we're going to share, share the responsibility for Fukushima, by burning the nuclear waste rubble in every prefecture in Japan. And in Osaka, uh, a professor, a committee, and others began to organize to leaflet and let the people know that this was horrendous. They should not be burning nuclear waste in Japan. And as a result of that activity, uh, Professor Shimoji, who's a professor in, in Japan and also is president of his union local, actually, uh, took up a fight, organized, got literature out, and for that he was arrested and put in jail for 21 days not only himself, but other people. So we're here to bring him here to the United States to let him explain to the American people what he is trying to tell the Japanese people and why this repression of him and others has to end. So welcome, Professor Shimoji. I think we should give him a standing ovation, really. So let's, let's get up and... <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, I would like to point out two sides of uh, the ongoing catastrophe of Fukushima. And to be honest, I myself am very scared because the accident is not under control, um, despite the fact that our government said it is under control. I'm scared of the chain reaction because it is not only ongoing at the Fukushima Daiichi, but there is also Fukushima Daini, and there is a Tokai reactor in Ibaraki, the oldest one, and Onagawa in Miyagi. And there is such a, a risk and possibility of chain reactions because 54 nuclear power plants are built in a really small place, that is Japan. So my first point is that despite the fact that the chain reaction, the risk per chain reaction has been reduced compared to the two years ago, but it is still there. And the second point is that we have been releasing contaminated water, and as a citizen and a citizen of Japan, as a Japanese person, I feel so bad about this and I apologize to all of you. So I would say the first um, first things first of my concern is the contamination, ongoing contamination and further risk. But the second thing is that Japanese government doesn't have neither intention or the skill to solve the problem. And the evidence is that we decided to invite Olympics in 2020. It's a nightmare. So I would like to uh, talk about the sabotage of the Japanese government. And you see that the radioactive materials are like all spread. And as I have, I, I also was, have been a part of uh, the movement against the incineration of uh, radioactive rubbles. And uh, I've seen, I thank for the people who are from California. I saw you um, protesting against the radio, burnt incineration of radioactive materials here too. So there are two parts I would say that we are we are we are trained to get used to from to to ex to be exposed to low level radiation to the higher through this incineration of a highly radioactive rubbles and when we get used to it these ashes highly radioactive ashes will be used as a part of like cement so it's going to be used for buildings and it's called eco cement which is such a nightmare, and it, is, it involves like every corporations in Japan and also multinational companies. And uh, all these, and the other thing is that, as other speaker has been talking about, that uh, food contamination is really high, and highly radiated food are eaten in and eaten and cooked in the school meals. So children are exposed to the radiation internally. And there are also uh, the movements. I mean. Um, the Japanese government has been, also the TEPCO and also the corporation, has been spreading radioactive materials and to the low-level radiation, so we're getting used to the low-level radiation. That's what my government is doing directly, but indirectly when we look at the you know, multinational or international level, the lobby, the multinational pro-nukes lobbies are getting in. For example, IAEA has been in Japan, made an office and headquarter, and also they're taking over the health, um, how do you call it, health research. So they get old, they gather all the information and they keep telling lies and they won't release the information to us. 
So these policies are protested, uh, you know, the people are protesting, people have been protesting against these uh, violent policies, but the state has been using violence to suppress us. And last year in December, I was detained for doing nothing for 12, 20 days. And uh, this has been a really fascist of a uh, Japanese government that we are, for those of us, like they're trying to pass this law against uh, those activists or anybody who is trying to reach to the information that is not really convening for the government or corporations. So uh, we're, the activists or people will be punished by accessing or revealing whatever that is inconvenient. So what I would like to share is not only about the nuclear accident, but historically uh, and also politically, this is um, such a dangerous situation for Japan and other countries because Japan doesn't seem to have any self-control. And it reminds us about the situation just before the, the World War II. I would like to finish here, but like if you have any questions, I would love to take your questions and please talk to me. Three brief questions, just particular for him, if you have any. Mary Beth? Um, it is probably you're talking about those people who, are, who live in Fukushima who put their soil, like a radioactive soil, on their own because there's no government or municipal like care of that. So they put the radioactive materials or the soil into bags and they put on the corner of their garden so the next door neighbor will be uh, very mad about it so the fukushima like you know people are accountable for the so-called the cleanup but it's not clean up it's just making the radioactive morass situation rather than you know the real cleanup does that answer your question yeah, can you know. can you talk about the um former prime minister uh abe's uh mentor uh, of course, me. And uh, coming out to be anti nuclear, please. Koizumi Juni. My understanding about the present Prime Minister Abe is that he's pro nukes, although his wife uh, is uh, anti nukes, although I don't hear anything about what she does. And going back to Koizumi, the former, pr pr former, not former, how many former, uh, but Prime Minister certainly turn against the nukes. He said that he doesn't need nuclear power anymore. Japan should shut down all the things. But my perspective is that because his son, Koizumi Shinjiro, is at is uh, now he's he's one of the members in the parliament and he's uh, he's kind of uh, taking a great position and, and in charge of the reconstruction and recovery of Fukushima. So just to protect his son, probably you know the Koizumi Junichiro is saying that you know I'm against nuclear power, but it's just for mesmerizing us to get votes. Could you, could you say it again? How are the people of Japan taking to the oppressive and suppressive actions of the government in reaction no, no, to this? No, no, no. I have to talk a little bit about the background. Mm -hmm. So the Japanese government is really oppressive and their t strategy is really, suppressive strategy is really different. Uh, for example, they, they do two things like, so attack those people who are important for organizing. So by taking those small number of people, the, we, they're gonna be able to decrease the power of organizing. And at the same time, they're gonna spread the information and attacking people like Koreans and marginalized minorities, and also people who could be in the media, who could be portrayed as so-called terrorists or people who are already in activists, so the major people or the normal people cannot sympathize with them. So these people are specifically targeted. And also, it is a normal for Japan to detain somebody without having anything decided on this person, but this person could be um, detained for at least like half a year to a year just before they get to the court. court. And that's the normal situation in Japan. So we, our system for human rights is really obsolete. There's no human rights. So the other problem is that, so those people who are not involved in the activism or those people are not educated about our criminal justice system or criminal injustice system. So, you know, I was arrested and my friends who are, if who know about this issue have been arguing and doing campaigns to raise awareness about how injustice this criminal injustice criminal law system is in Japan.
This is not normal of us, like, but when I was detained for 20 days, I wrote letters and reports inside, from the inside of the jail, and also I did support for my friends who were being arrested, and uh, we did performance including live rock bands, and I put like rainbow wigs and stuff, and it made it into a performance, but this kind of thing doesn't happen in Japan, really. Ah, so it's nice. Thank you very much. Ask Chizu Hamada and No Nukes Action Committee for uh, my letter. I have written letters to my students about my arrest and it's uh, translated into English so you can have an access to that. Thank you for listening. <laughs>